I was going to ask you about the flight from Manila to Guam, but before I started on that, I was, there were a couple of questions I didn't ask you about going from Bangkok to Manila. Mm -hmm. And uh, toward the end of your flight, you were starting to run a little low on fuel because you had figured the uh, distance quite, you were about 100 miles off. On right, your, right. You, Actually, mostly it was the winds. The winds. I'd always had a tailwind. Right. And suddenly I had a tailwind. Headwind, and uh, it was difficult to get the weather information. These well, in those countries, have you ever tried it in those countries? Mm -hmm. Well, bureaucracy, and uh, you you got to wind up to a tower, and, and of course the language problem wasn't very good anyway. This is Bangkok, and their English wasn't very American. Right. And trying to do navigation and um, meteorology and and it knowledge uh, was a little confusing and different well different words that they were using all in all so i had got i had managed to get the phone number of an um, american airbase and i got a telephone weather briefing from this american airbase mm -hmm. so i didn't go upstairs and get all this fancy stuff from the em weather people and so i had a very brief which should have been fine but it didn't win all the details of of the winds and everything, so that I ended up, uh, I had really plenty of gas, but not a huge amount of extra right. that I wanted to get lost and have to get back and found again, so or have to have any unusual thing going on. And you were trying to squeeze every bit out of the Right, I wanted tank. to have safety, yeah. safety margin. And, and there was some kind of a thing where you actually would squeeze the fuel out and then the engine would start it, to run rough. Well, it, the engine was rough and I found that a um, uh, mixture of the same that got down in there uh, and in, in the carburetor by uh, putting in the alternate air. That gave me more air and I got a, I, the engine ran smoother but it was using more fuel because of all the extra air you had to get the right proportion of air and fuel. Right. And just there was more air, it was using more fuel. Okay. So the consumption was higher. Okay, so... But it was running smoother. Okay. Um, it says that you were thirsty. Uh, you just had a little bit of left to drink, and but you were afraid to drink that the rest of that water because you thought you might end up floating around in a raft if you ran out of fuel. Well, Bangkok in general was a difficult place because of the language problems and mm -hmm. that. Well, I had two, um, two flasks. One up was scotch and one was water. I was just just like drinking water. But trying to get fresh water was not always easy at these airports. And I had not been able to get water. And so my water flask was pretty low. You say one had scotch in it? One had scotch. It was at nighttime, not when I was in fly. Oh, okay. That okay. was tucked away in my suitcase. I wanted to clear that up. One in the suitcase. <laughs> I don't want to get those confused. One in the suitcase <laughs> and one where I could get to it at the cockpit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we got to be clear on that point. <laughs> and I remember stay, uh, sitting outside my, and my water flask, but it looked like a whiskey flask, you know. Uh -huh. and, I'm dr and I'm sitting there and these pilots are walking through and watching me drinking from my flask. Okay. So at one point you said a prayer. In fact, it said you said lots of prayers. Well, I did. Yeah. I mean, I mean, nobody else to talk to. And I knew he was up there watching now for me. So you believe in God? Oh, most definitely. All right, let's talk about on April 11th from Manila to Guam. The distance was 1,597 miles. You woke up again at 3.30 in the morning. An alarm woke me up. <laughs> Are you starting to get used to getting up that early or uh, uh, Yes. Yeah, but, but you didn't like it. I never did like to get up early. Right. Remember when I was, I was in high school, I was always <laughs> slept till the last minute, <laughs> raced out the door. All right. When you did your run-up where you took off from Manila going to Guam, you noticed the engine was running smooth and this was very reassuring. Yeah. Because they cleaned all the sand out. Well, for Manila, yeah, after right. Manila, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. could tell the difference in the edge. So you got up early enough that you could see the sun rising above the horizon as you blew out over the, blew east over the water. And you barely had time to catch the phenomenal beauty that is God's gift. Each dawn to pilots who venture eastward over the oceans. You got a chance to see that, that not too many people probably get an opportunity to see the sun rising from mm -hmm. an altitude. Started thinking about Balboa and Magellan. Mm -hmm. Started thinking that kind of had a... Well, after all, I was the spirit of Columbus. Was named after Columbus, Christopher. Happened to come along with, with poor Columbus too, but it was actually Christopher. So in a way, just the fact that your airplane was named Spirit of Columbus was not just... Well, you see my stationery I've got. Oh, oh it's a moment. Right here. Oh, I was working on a letter. I've got it right up. Is that it? 
Yeah, see him. Um, okay. See, there's Columbus. Oh, I see. And the airplane. Oh, look at that. How about that's that? That's the spirit of Columbus. Yeah. Okay. My. So after your flight, you landed at Agana Naval Air Station. Mm -hmm. At about 8.05 p.m., long time. And I found out that I, and this had to do, so it had to do with politics, I found out that I did not have permission to land there. It was a naval air station. And evidently, Jones people had tried to keep me from getting permission to land. Now, I didn't know I needed it especially. And this general had told me to land there. And I just assumed it was all taken care of. Now, he may have tried yet. But anyway, Jones guy was trying to keep me out of getting permission to land in Guam. He was, um, well, he was in the military, and he was the head of the, that part of the F, or the, not the FAI, well, the U.S. member of the FAI. And he was trying to get them to keep me from landing. So after I landed, they had me a paper, sign your name here. Okay, now, now you're legal. Oh, now you're legal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it says that you, you never expected Guam, the visit in, in, in Guam, to be like it was, because when you landed, there was an excited voice that said, welcome back to the United States. And the crowd cheered. You wrote, it was a thrilling moment. You even had a Navy band playing. And can you imagine? I was invited to spend the month with the governor as his guest. Seeing all the island and everything. And I had to say, I'm sorry, but no thank you. i got to go. <laughs> So you, you got to go to the governor's mansion? Well, I spent the night there. You spent the night there? They had a big party, but okay. they sent all the other people home then. And I spent the night and had to get up before dawn, and I was in the air at dawn. And Russ called you during the party? Oh, yes. He made, and they sent everybody home then. We were having a big, long party. Uh, after Russ's telephone call, they all left. Why is that? Why? Why? Well, he told them to shut up. <laughs> He insulted the governor. He did. Oh, yeah. Huh. How'd you feel about that? Well, dejected, of course, but what am I going to do? I'm a few thousand miles away. I told him off when I got home, but 